Hi, today we're going to fix the door lock in this Freelander one. Uh, the lock mechanism is in here, held in by these screws. To get access to it, we have to take off the inside panel. Uh, so the problem with this one is that it neither locks nor uh, unlocks on the key fob. Um, it does make a bit of a noise when you're trying to lock it, but no noise on unlocking. Uh, there's two motors inside this lock probably means one of them is gone and one of them is stuck. Uh, of course you could just replace the door lock uh, mechanism. Uh, you might get second hand ones on eBay and God knows how long they're going to last. Uh, new ones are probably quite expensive. Uh, I'll try and find some links maybe later, see how much they are exactly. Uh, but either way we're going to have to get into the door to remove the lock and remove the panel. Removing this panel is fairly straightforward. Uh, this piece of plastic is held on by clips and has to be uh, levered off which I think is a two hand job we'll do in a minute. There is one screw in here and he's removing. Uh, here we go. Wiggle that a little bit. Make sure it doesn't break. Uh, some big positive drive screws, bolts in here, here and in here. And some screws around the bottom of uh, this storage compartment. And then there's clips that hold it in. The whole thing then just needs uh, giving a sharp tug to unclip it. Uh, this panel over the uh, door mirror um, area needs removing. This little clip is in there. You can see that piece of yellow and white. So to avoid snapping that off, what you might be able to do is get a screwdriver in there and leave that out. Um, probably you'll end up snapping it because most of these do. Um, but this is the construction. You snap it then just have to glue it back on again afterwards also easily forgotten there's one screw behind this piece of plastic and he's pulling off and he's getting there to undo that screw you'll need to release the connectors to the window and door switches so these little studs here little press buttons need pushing in which you can do at the same time with the screwdriver and lever it out like so so next release this cable from the inner handle it's just a piece of plastic and he's pushing back and that releasing. Uh, a T25 Torx bit is required to remove these bolts. Then you'll find, if you get your hand up in here, that the old locker mechanism starts to drop down. And uh, next we'll dismantle or remove the outer door handle, give us better access, for which we need to get to a bolt, which is up here, just about to see, zoom in. Yeah, just let's see the edge of there. And there's another one about two inches to the right of this picture. Uh, that should then release the outer uh, door handle, give you access to removing some of the links to the lock. Mm. If you look through this hole, you might be able to just about see where the different bolts and links are. So I think. That is the other bolt, which we can just about get to. You can get to that other bolt via this access hole here. Um, fairly wave with your hands, get your hand up there and guide it and you'll be able to undo that one. Uh, the outer handle then lifts away like so and we can release the lever by pushing away this piece of plastic and fully releasing the handle. Okay, you may find that piece of plastic snaps off. Need a cable tie to fix it later. Probably best to also release the lock lever by prising this piece of metal out. And also remove this rod to give you some more um, working room as well. And that is how it releases. Under this 10mm bolt holding the um, window guide and then you can push the guide uh, back and just about maneuver out the lock mechanism in this sort of angle. Uh, you have a look down here. Yeah, let's do that. And you can see that end of the lock will just about clear that crossbar. Unplug the lock, of course. We should be able to get it out. Like so. And you can see this one. It's already been replaced once for a second hand one. 
this is the folly of just putting a second hand uh, anything on because you don't know how long that's going to last and the likelihood is if yours is gone after 14 years then a second hand one is not far behind it so better to fix it properly in the first place or buy a new one if you have to but you should imagine they're bloody expensive so personally I like to have a go at fixing things try and make them like new some people don't and that's up to you but uh, I've done one of these before where the brushes were worn out uh, so let's just see if I can remember how we take it all apart I know this plastic cover comes off first and last time I had to drill out a rivet which is a bit of a pain um, let's see if there's any easier way of doing it I know this plastic cover comes off somehow there we go that does indeed just unclip off so looking at this straight away we can see that we do indeed have to drill off this little bit of compressed metal on the top because that's squashed on the top and on the bottom effectively is like a, a rivet securing this plate um, and this plate has to move out of the way in order to get this lower cover off as you can see the plastic goes all the way around here so this cover has got to come off to get to the motors so drill that take that uh, spring type washer off undo these screws um, useful to take if you're doing this useful to take a few pictures of where all the parts go um, and it's relatively straightforward although it does look a bit daunting to start with uh, if you take this plastic green piece out first just by squashing the ends like so then I believe this will rotate around more perhaps there we go screws out let's see how far we get with this Hopefully then we can get this plastic cover off. All these clips are broken left, right and centre. Not really essential anyhow. There we go. Everything pretty much intact. Gear is not looking too bad. Motors do actually rotate. Seem to have some little micro switches here as well for I guess sensing when the door is uh, locked and open and so on. So we'll just prise out like so. So then we test the motor, getting some wires from a power supply or a 12 volt battery. Uh, put a couple of tags into the little slots where the connections go. Uh, those tags I got from my bag of new motors just took it off one of the motors or oh, you could just poke some wires in there uh, this one uh, doesn't work you can feel it twitching a little bit as you rotate it and obviously the brushes or something have gone the other motor um, seems to be working fine uh, even holding the end it would rotate strongly which makes sense because um, it made a noise when uh, either locking or unlocking and not the other side so one of the motors has obviously gone so let's take this one apart and see what's wrong with the brushes so we have to lever up these uh, metal tags on the body of the motor like so side and then this plastic end should just lift off you have to be a little bit careful that the brushes clear any washers that are on the end of the shaft so just do that carefully you can see it's a bit of a mess inside uh, the commutator this bit that makes the electrical connection is all black obviously been arcing so uh, i think we'll probably need to change at least this end section of the motor uh, what we'll do is just replace the brush end from a new motor uh, so here's our new motor only cost about uh, a pound from ebay shipped from china uh, a little bit more if you get them shipped locally 
uh, it took about three weeks for something to come from China. Um, so then we'll clean up the old motor and watch you don't lose the washers that are on the end, which I nearly did there. Probably best to take that off, put it to one side. Um, then you also need to clean up the copper on the commutator, which will put a little bit of sandpaper on it and then just rotate it around a few times. Be careful you don't knock any wires off the coils that are just underneath. So don't push it down too far. That's getting a lot cleaner now. Now once the new brushes are uh, put on, it should be as good as new, with a little bit of lubrication, put a bit of oil on the bush at the bottom. Check it rotates okay. Then we need to get a fine screwdriver and lever the brush section of this new motor off. So you need to dig it down. See where these pieces of metal are bent over? You need to dig in with your screwdriver, bend those up. Same the other side, then this should lift off. The other alternative is to actually drill those out, which might be easier. So with a two mil drill bit, yeah, we could probably drill those off because on the old motor, the tab is in the middle anyhow. So at the same time, we can make a little uh, slot for that to fit onto it. So we'll do that. So again, do this in the vise. Uh, otherwise, you'll probably drill a hole in your hand. Just doing this so you can see properly. That releases the brushes. Now I'm just going to use the spindle from the unused part of uh, the other half of the motor uh, to put that in the uh, bearing there through the brushes, which goes in quite easily. And then I'm going to put a socket on top and just give that a little knock and that'll knock out that tiny little copper uh, plate or washer that's sitting on the end, which uh, should give us enough clearance to get the brush end part on like so and somewhere that popped out that you can see you can see now that goes all the way through just one more little modification we'll do to this motor to get it to fit a little bit better without rubbing and that's just to bend these little tags here three of them around the outside just bend those down they're the connections onto the coils all right with that tiny plate knocked out the end of the brush uh, construction we should be able to get the shaft of that motor all the way through. Just got to be careful we don't knock off those carbon brushes as we're inserting the end mechanism. Yeah, it on either side of the washer. Come on. So the brush end section fits fine into the old motor housing. Just check that the motor turns smoothly, pull it slightly, push it slightly, both ways. Make sure there's no sort of grunching noises. That one is then fine. And we just need to uh, test it before we uh, bend these pieces of metal over again. This is our wires from our battery or power supply, 12 volts. Runs nicely one way. Check it the other way as well. A little bit of sparking internally so let's just check that out so the sparking was caused by just a little bit of muck a bit of uh, debris copper in between these three metal plates on the commutator so just get a fine bladed screwdriver and clean out in between all of those slots wipe it off reassemble then check again and now it's running fine also checked the uh, other motor uh, looks at its brushes so actually those weren't uh, worn out at all so I uh, didn't need to do anything to that one. While you're at it, you might as well check these micro switches work properly. So there's three connections you can check with a multimeter on resistance range or beeper range connectivity test. So when they connect, there's a little beeping noise. Uh, so two of these connections will be connected. This is, you probably can't hear that, but it's those two. And when you press the button in, it disconnect and then the other two 
will only beep or connect when you press the button in, which is those two. So that works fine. Test the other ones in a similar way as well. But now it's just a matter of reassembling and greasing up if uh, needs be. So that's two halves together. Um, some of these clips obviously broke off when disassembling. It doesn't really matter too much because you've got four screws holding the two halves together anyhow. Um, and also this um, screw, or used to be a, a bolt, recess bolt holding the metal plate uh, around to the front, also squeezes the plastic together as well. So you notice there, because I uh, broke the spring clip that was um, on the end of this uh, smooth bolt that went through in this position, um, I've replaced it by a screw with a uh, spring clip. Um, use the screw because it's got a recessed head, uh, holds firm enough, just put a little bit of Loctite seal on it to hold it for extra security. Uh, that was the original one. Um, also over here, note that where we had to drill off a piece of metal to release this control arm in order to get the thing apart. Uh, to reassemble, I've drilled a 3mm hole uh, probably something like about six or seven mil deep, but a tiny little screw in the top with a washer. Now that is nice and firm. Again, but a bit of uh, thread locking compound down the hole. Uh, it's nice and tight, uh, but still allowing the control arm to move nicely. So um, on the control arms, note the position of these when you reassemble. Um, it's very easy to get this plastic piece on uh, the wrong side of this metal piece, which I did the first time round. Uh, so just look at those positions, that piece goes down there, that piece goes into a little hole in there. Um, so this arm is the bit that controls the locking um, and this bit goes off to your um, door locking the little arm, goes to the top of the door. I'll put that back in later when we assemble it on the car. Uh, this, I think, is the outdoor handle. This is the cable for the inside uh, inside door handle. Um, you can do some rudimentary testing of it without powering it up. Um, so, at the moment, it is unlocked. And what you can do is to mimic the action of the door. Pull a screwdriver up, which pulls this uh, arm into place. That's the locked position. Uh, with the lever down and uh, note you can't unlock it by pulling up on the inner lever because that just moves that spring doesn't actually do anything that's a security feature um, one alternative to dismantling this and changing the um, or fixing the motors uh, I've seen somebody do uh, a fix to do some locking and unlocking by moving this arm so this is the bit that you want to move if you have some external motor to control your locking and unlocking. Um, what somebody did is drill a hole through this piece of plastic. You could use one of these generic central door locking motors that you can get from eBay for about £15. Pounds. Uh, and it comes with a rod. And you could run it up in this position, bend a little uh, right angle bend on the end, and slot it into a hole you drill in the plastic here. Then when the motor pulls up and down, it locks and unlocks for you. So that's an external solution if you don't want to take your uh, lock assembly apart. The only downside to that is you need to find some wires in your wiring loom to wire these two in. Um, so it's only a two wire connection. 12 volts one way will lock it, 12 volts connected the other way around will unlock it. So you need to try and find some wires going into the connector here um, that will do that solution. There's quite a few wires on there, so be a little bit of hunting around, probably look in the Haynes manual for the wiring diagram. Might help you. These motors, of course, are just mounted inside the door via these screw holes. Drill a couple of holes in the door frame to mount them. There's probably room for it. So that's an alternative, possible quicker solution. All right, so that's the door lock roughly uh, fitted, plugged in, just one loose bolt holding it in place. And that allows us plenty of room to fit the handle. Uh, where the clip had uh, broken before, I just drilled a hole through the remaining piece of plastic, put some cable ties around it. That'll hold fine. You can see where the other rods go. That is the inside rod that goes to the button at the top there. And quite difficult to get this handle fitted, so what I'm going to do is just take that bolt off. And uh, oh, one other thing before I do that. Uh, this key lock part 
uh, has to go in in this position like so it pops behind that piece of the metalwork that's then going to slot in to the body of the handle when we fit it later all right then we just push the lock down a little bit that allows us enough room to fit the handle and then reposition the lock in the correct place again see the handle a load loose is now in its correct position just have to get a hand up behind to make sure that the key part of the lock goes in to that hole at the front properly and finally that's the key lock and handle in position a little bit tricky um, you have to feel by getting a hand up behind at the top while also looking through this hole the lock has to be quite loose so that you can actually see through this hole push the, the lock over a little bit so you can actually see past that um, where the actual key lock part sits with respect to the metal and so on a bit done now uh, before you tighten up all of the bolts uh, it'll be worthwhile testing it uh, so to check the key works so to fool the car into thinking that the door's locked you can just push with a screwdriver like so and then it thinks the door is shut and then we can do the locking and unlocking so first of all check that the key locking works you can hear that working and you can see the fog going up and down and hopefully we'll see it on the other doors as well so unlock you have to do it twice with the key it's a safety feature same with the fob to unlock the other doors so the key works and let's just check the central locking as well unlock and lock hopefully you can see that so all is now working the other things left now is to get the bolts on the inside of the door handle it's a little bit tricky getting this uh, right hand bolt uh, in you have to have an arrangement like this with your screwdriver you have to have access through this hole and you can see there where it's going to go just above that orange piece um, so you need to get your hand up and feel a little bit with your fingers as well secret is to do that left hand one first uh, that secures the handle in place stops it moving and at the same time drop the lock take the bolts out that gives you enough uh, clearance around the hole and then it's a straight shot at getting that bolt in where it needs to go reinsert the cable for the inner handle and reassemble the inside of the door so that's it that's the central locking door lock working again and only cost a pound for the part from the new motor and there's the finished job and it locks or unlocks and just for completeness in case it's the rear door lock that you're interested in is that removed a little bit easier to get the door card off and a little bit easier to get the door lock and motor mechanism out because you can see the access is a little bit easier through this hole here um, and you don't have to take off the outer handle you can just prise off the lever that attaches to the handle let's get a screwdriver in there to do that which makes uh, as I say a bit easier and a bit of time saving no bin at the bottom so no screws to remove just need to give the liner a good sharp pull off um, you might lose or break a couple of these uh, plastic uh, stays uh, reinsert them as necessary quite a similar mechanism uh, so we'll just do the same job of dismantling the motors and fixing this one and inside the mechanism is similar it's worthwhile taking a note of where all the levers go either use this video or take a picture yourself when reassembling I'm going to try on this dismantling to see whether it's possible to leave uh, this connection alone not uh, drill it out saves a little bit of time and instead try and prise the metal plate over these plastic studs to see if we can then lever it out um, so this is halfway done difficult doing it one-handed so I might need to put down the camera but I think well, that's certainly coming so with a bit of levering it was actually possible to um, get it off I released this piece of plastic from that piece just in case that was under strain um, but uh, so it's possible 
that saves a little bit of time drilling this piece out um, so now fixing the motors is relatively straightforward exactly as we did before and that's the motor fixed and it reassembled again that's a little bit tricky pushing it over the metal plate you have to um, push hard or tap it with a hammer gently uh, but it's possible and uh, so presumably it would also work on the front lock as well without having to drill out that uh, stud I just got to make sure that all the levers go in the correct positions while you're pushing it in and that's the rear door reassembled the lock is now working which we shall now approve we can just about see the button sticking up there press the lock and it works unlock and it also works so that's the rear door done rear lock uh, it's a little bit easier than doing the front one I would say probably just a fraction over an hour to do that. Thanks for watching. Good luck with yours. Bye.